Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to our fifth uh, business awareness revision session. Today we'll be concluding uh, task two. This really has been quite a substantial task. Um, so we've we've looked at various parts of it. This week, you'll be excited to know, we're starting with the topic of technology. This really is something that has impacted hugely on how we all work. Um, I couldn't have been sitting here as I am today talking to you through this wonderful thing called Zoom um, 10 years ago. Um, quality of internet connection would never be reliable or fast enough for us to stream video and audio without breaking up. I did get involved about 15 or so years ago trying to present classes like this through the internet um, and it was very very challenging with the broadband that we had then um, sound would break up video would break up people would fall off the course it was quite a struggle so technology has had a colossal impact on so many areas of how we work the scariest bit i think of technology i'm sure everybody's experienced this you go in the garden and you have a conversation over the garden fence with your neighbour and you say, my goodness, I do like your grass. You've got you've done a lovely job of cutting the grass. Is that that new lawnmower? That's really good. I'm very impressed with that. And then 45 minutes later, you happen to look at your phone and your phone is offering you various lawn care products and new lawnmowers. Uh, and other gardening equipment. Everybody else had this experience. You haven't done a Google search or anything. All you've done is had a conversation with an earshot of your phone, and now you're getting peppered with adverts. So that that shows you just how we really are immersed in a world of technology, um, and our role within business um, is to understand the opportunities as well as the threats that this presents. Um, Two topics on this first slide, two very popular buzzwords nowadays, as we call them, outsourcing and offshoring. Um, easily confused, but the, 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 for me, the biggest clue is shore in the word offshoring. Now here we are, Britain, we are an island, we're on an island. So anything that is offshore, suggests that overseas for everywhere is overseas you go to france it's overseas um you go to europe overseas go to america it's overseas so offshoring the key part of this is it's when we sh we are getting something we're moving part of our business overseas and we might do this for a lot of reasons um, the, the traditional one is there are many developing economies throughout the world where wage rates are considerably lower than they are you know, here, in, here in the West, as we call ourselves. Um, the other thing is, so wages, raw materials. If you are looking to manufacture a product uh, that that needs something digging out of the ground. Um, you know, maybe maybe you are looking to um, smelt something out of out of metal, out of aluminium. Um, so it makes sense to, to carry out your industrial processes at a location where the material can be sourced. So you're only then moving the finished product thousands or hundreds or thousands of miles rather than having to move great mountains of raw iron ore or aluminium or whatever from 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 the ground um, and the big thing that, that facilitates this technologies in, enabled integration the thing we are able to do now is communicate um, so as I'm talking to you now, um, I'm guessing everybody I'm speaking to is, in, is everybody in the UK tonight? Have we got anybody who's signed in from overseas? Curiosity? Anybody? No? 
we're all in the UK. OK. So it is possible now, you know, to have a, a, an organisation overseas. You can have cameras throughout your factories overseas so you can see what's happening, you know, thousands of miles away. Um, no longer is it a case of if you need to find out what's happening on the ground, you've got to get on an aeroplane and fly. So offshoring involves transferring a major part of activity overseas, as opposed to outsourcing. Outsourcing tends to be something that is perhaps generally more likely to be temporary. If we have a temporary peak in demand for an item, we need, we've need we got customers for 2,000 items and we can only make 1,500, we'll buy in the extras. So typically, whereas overseas, our offshoring is more likely to be a permanent arrangement because there's a lot more effort in setting it up. You can outsource supply of a component with a phone call. Um, the other reason that we would outsource is that the word there, specialist. Uh, it may well be that there are parts of our product that we don't have the expertise to make. Um, most computer manufacturers will buy in the components, the chips, the processors, the memory. They won't necessarily have it all in house. So specialist manufacturers will produce components um, because it makes more sense that one one manufacturer makes components for everybody rather than everybody tooling up to make the same so if you pick out the key words in any exercise where you're asked to distinguish between outsourcing and offshoring um the, the clues are are there okay what next Automation, the effect of automation. Um, there are kind of two schools of thought, two schools of thought when it comes to automation. Um, who can tell me some good, if, if we have a production line, um, what sort of advantages can we think of? What, what do we, what do we gain? There we go, let's do it this way. So what do we gain from automation? Anybody want to make suggestions? I know there's a few suggestions here already. <laughs> we can pick them out, can't we? We can pick them out. Speed, we can make things faster. Um, anybody who's involved in processing um, purchase invoices in, in our accounting trade, plainly, Nowadays, your software can anticipate, you can, you can use default settings. Um, for a long time with Sage, you put an invoice in and then it would, for the next, if it's the same, similar invoice on the next line, you can just repeat a lot of the entries just with one keystroke. So we can get more done faster. Generally, we're less likely to make our, uh, Again. we'll make less mistakes so accuracy can be improved and accuracy isn't only in terms of fewer errors um, if we're talking of a, a manufactured product nowadays um, the quality of the product can be better um, because a machine can work to very close tolerances. So even quite substantial products like cars, um, electronics can be assembled to incredibly high degree of accuracy and consistency. Every one comes out the same. I well remember a number of years ago, I, I, um, for a time, I worked with co companies who were in the motor trade. And I well remember uh, seeing a brand new company car arrive with the clock fitted upside down in the dashboard. It was a square clock. 
and had the six at the top and the 12 at the bottom, which at the time just was amusing, but it gave me, gave me food for thought that one part of being human is if, if they give us an opportunity to get something wrong, one of us will take that opportunity and will. You wouldn't think that you could put a clock in upside down if you were really concentrating on what you're doing, but hey-ho, now machines do not have that problem. Although the irony is if a machine is programmed slightly wrong, everything will be equally wrong. 100% perfectly wrong. So once right, automation does give us benefits. Downside of automation, looking at the wider economy, item three, replacing the human workforce, that's all well and good. But of course, we do need employment, you know, in our lives. Um, and the less routine jobs there are, then the less jobs there are in total. So those jobs have to be replaced um, with, with other kinds of work. Um, we've already said about, well, it says processing credit notes, we've said invoices, haven't we? Customer statements, which are a byproduct. All we have to do now is put the invoice in and then the statement will compile itself. There was a time when statements had to be manually typed up from a pile of invoices. So big, big time saving there. <coughs> Reconciliations, again, if the data is already in the system, you know, what we have to do, we're just looking, we just tick, 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 tick done much much quicker and the basics of, of tax returns um, and there are three stages to the process that we have here the one that's been around for a long time is automation one form or another we've had machines doing part of the work for many years so automation We tell the machine what to do, simple term, and the machine does. So we give it an instruction. The instruction might be flicking some switches. It might be back in the day, putting in a punch card. Nowadays, it may well be sending some computerized instructions to the machine. The machine will follow those instructions. Now the second stage, and here's where it's the world's starting to become very interesting, you know, a bit scary perhaps. Machine learning starts off, we tell the machine what to do. The machine does what we tell it. What happens then though is the machine reviews what it's done um, and it corrects errors for next time. So in the first case, our instructions are very specific. The second case, still fairly specific but there is flexibility. What about number three, machine uh, artificial intelligence? Now this is the thing everybody is talking about in certain circles. Um, <laughs> people are saying that artificial intelligence is potentially more dangerous than nuclear weapons. I think, um, does, everybody, does everybody remember the Terminator films? from back in the day. Everybody remember the Matrix even? Yes? We've got a yes Terminator Matrix or no if you haven't, if you've not heard of them. We probably shouldn't dwell on that. I don't want to put you all on a downer and frighten you all tonight. Um, the theme of both the Matrix and the Terminator films was that the machines became so intelligent and started thinking for themselves and decided to take over. 
it's all science fiction and some would say a bit nonsensical but um, there are those who understand these things who say it's not as science fiction as you might think with artificial intelligence okay we tell the machine at first okay machine does what it thinks this time the machine still reviews what it's done it still corrects errors but this time the machine may well um, originate new ways of doing things um, we've all used google we've all clicked the button said google tell me about this tell me about that or if it's apple it's it's siri tell me about this tell me about that the software computer programs that are behind that interface um have been evaluated by by experts using various tests um and are starting to function at the level of a fairly fairly young but intelligent child um so although we start we do give instructions the difference now is our instructions can be quite vague we will more likely give the machine rather than instructions we will give it objectives um and the ai will decide how that's the big difference with automation we tell the machine exactly what to do with machine learning we tell it what to do within parameters with ai we tell the machine the requirement and there comes a point where the machine will determine how best to achieve that so you can think of these as three stages um, in in a development that's that's been going back many years uh, but what we are seeing of course is from a bit of automation that was just in factories and you didn't really meet it day to day to machine learning to ai is starting to filter into every aspect of of life very scary so artificial intelligence what can we use it for then and so the difference is whereas automation automation that would replace manual tasks ai can replace thinking tasks and that's a big difference so keywords to watch out for ai systems may recognize and interpret um, and pattern recognition identifying patterns in a, a myriad of data um, a large computer can consider vast numbers of different factors in a very short time um, and with that it can anticipate what is likely to happen we're seeing this with weather forecasting for, for the recent years time was the weather forecast on the tv was the butt of comedians jokes whereas nowadays um they're pretty good by and large not very good in cleethorpes curiously houses houses tend to be a bit hit and miss um counting entries better better coding reduced coding errors yep i suppose an ai never gets tired never comes to work with a hangover never gets bored 
all the things that can lead to errors. And again, fraud detection, we're back again to patterns. Um, there was a time that every VAT registered business would get a visit from Revenue and Customs once in a while, just to check that everything's as it should be. Run an eye over the records, the invoices, the day books, the ledgers, to make sure that they're operating the VAT system correctly, collecting and handing over VAT the way they should. That doesn't happen anymore. What happens nowadays is, after we've keyed in all of our VAT figures for the revenue's benefit, their software will analyze that look at the sector of business that we're in and it'll look and it will have a standard pattern within parameters of what sort of ratio it expects to VAT collected to revenue, to VAT collected to VAT paid to suppliers, to the ratio of of um, revenues to costs and it'll have a pretty good idea of what to expect within our sector and if we put in a VAT return and our figures are pretty much within parameters and pretty much in line with everybody else's we may not hear from the revenue for years on the other hand if our sector normally has around about a seven percent amount of VAT to pay compared to the amount that we sell um, and we're only reporting 3%, you can rest assured within a very short time, sure enough, there will be a message arrives that, hello, we're, we're going to pay you a visit. It, that's called exception reporting. And, and again, what, what the software is doing is, is looking for exceptions to the rules. It's looking for inconsistencies. which are all things that very skilled humans could only do before, but now. So these are examples, um, you know, of, of um, how AI is used. The process is called iteration. This is a term you may meet, which kind of is something like, we start with an instruction, which is carried out, and then it's reviewed, and then the machine feeds back. So the next time the job is done, it has learned from how it got on the first time. You know, and it may it may it may have it may review it may have measurements uh, it may it may even be reviewing it may be taking account of customer feedback well, various factors might be going into that review but on the basis of the review the software itself actually does the feedback and revises the instructions accordingly. And that is the difference between automation um, and, and artificial intelligence. Machine learning is sort of a step along that way. All good so far. We've actually got to our task already tonight. Not perhaps not as long a session as some of the ones we've had. So we're looking for four advantages and it just says of embracing technology. So this isn't specific to automation or machine learning or AI. So multi-choice, well, we've got to pick four from six. Always the way to tackle multi-choice is to look for the bad ones, look for the ones that are nonsense. Um, and then often we're only left with the right ones. Um, speeds up processes sounds reasonable. Reduces opportunity for error sounds reasonable. Investment is not expensive. <laughs> hmm. um, not in my experience, uh, by and large. Although you can get a lot of technology 
look at the technology that is in your smartphone for what you actually pay for it. Not the stuff that used to cost many, many thousands is now a few hundred. Speeds up, reasonable. Streamlines information, so removes excess data. Less data. And therefore, security requirements are re re oops, are reduced. So we're already keen on that. Well, less data doesn't sound reasonable, and security reduced. Obviously, we all live in fear of the Data Protection Act. We all are very keen to observe its requirements. So I'm thinking not. So I think we can knock out two here. Shout up if anybody objects. So I would say speeds up, yes. Reduces error, yes. Speeds up decisions, yes. Whoops. And streamlines information. So I suppose, yes, da when data is gathered, um, there is a term that you'll meet when you deal with spreadsheets may well have done already anybody who's well on with level three at this point how do we how do we cleanse the data that's coming in data validation when we're gathering data this is this is why if we're gathering data much better if we have a questionnaire that has tick one two or three rather than tell me about so if we want to use technology to analyze data it does have to be validated and filtered to a form that that makes sense get up so that's that's not bad four marks is it that i don't think that's a four minute task somehow Okay, your turn, everybody. I'm going to call that one, and I'm going to call that two. I'm going to call that one A, and that one B. So, offshoring A or B. Let's have some answers in the chat box if we can. Make sure everyone's been listening. A is an agreement between parties that involves one company hiring in a specialist company to take over the spy product service. B is an agreement between parties in different countries to try and take advantage of lower costs and tax breaks. Yep, yeah, looking pretty unanimous. Sure enough, one is indeed B. The, the magic word really said to look for is countries. Yep, terrific. So therefore, two is A, and as we said right at the start, specialists. That's often the reason. You know, why why try and do something you're not really very good at? Actually, I should have used a different colour. Um, why try to do something you're not good at that somebody else is very good at, and they can sell it to you cheaper than you make it yourself? Okay, and that concludes tonight's session. Thank you very much for your time.